Okay, well, um, I'd like to thank MTEC for giving me the opportunity to talk about two of my most uh, biggest passions in the same talk, I've got 10 minutes. My first passion has been my career, basically, understanding the brain mechanisms for perception and memory. But my more recent passion is fixing the economy. So in the brain mechanisms, I've done lots of things, starting 40 years ago, including starting a company in 1999, doing uh, bio-inspired image processing. More recently, we're working on chip design. But from 2010 onwards, I've been uh, obsessed, my wife would say, by the economy. And I have a blog with something like 800 pages on it with actually 440,000 visits, so somebody's reading it, maybe only Google, but uh, I'm not really sure. Um, so, fast vision, this has been my number one topic. The, um, rapid sequential visual presentation uh, at about 10 frames a second, these are pictures of animals, you can probably, you can see them all, your brain processes them fine. I'll do the same thing now with uh, one image it was not an animal. Did you all see the Mona Lisa? Well, you can do that sort of throwing in an odd man out for all sorts of images, like these ones. These are all things that will activate your brain if you're in a, in a, in a nor normal situation. And the question is, how does the brain do that? How do, how do we manage to process all these images? And for many years, I've been arguing that this has to be a feed-forward process. The, the brain simply is too slow to do anything other than a feed-forward pass. Um, uh, I've been arguing that actually since 1988. Um, and it, not only is it very fast, but you only have a, a, a time for one spike at each layer, and that's how we came up with this spike net system. Question is, can machines do the same sort of thing as, um, as, uh, as our brains? Well, for a very long time, I sort of said, no way, human brains are better than anything out there. Um, but there's a thing called the ImageNet Challenge, where they, uh, that's been going for years now. Uh, computer scientists are given 10 million images with 10,000 10, labels, and you train up your system, and then uh, in the competition phase, they give you lots of new images, and you have to classify them. Well, this is the sort of performance. Uh, the blue dots are conventional computer vision. And you can see that basically it, it sort of uh, saturated about 75% correct. And then in 2012, you got this green dot here, which was Jeff Hinton and his students with their supervision, pure feed forward neural network. It thrashed computer vision. Uh, and uh, if you look at human performance, you're about there. Well, you can see that as of 2015, the best systems beat humans on a really, really challenging task. For me, this is. A, a, an amazing result. And, and of course, what happened was Jeff Inden and his two students set up a company which was bought by Google for several hundred million dollars. And uh, Jan Lacan, who was the, the other guy who was doing feed forward convolutional neural networks since the late 1980s, has been fired by, hired by uh, Facebook. And in the last few, few years, I mean, deep learning startups are all over the place. This is the CB Insights map last year, but actually it's far more than 60 startups. This is a, a more recent thing. There's the 360 odd startups. This is just the startups that were created in August and September. They're just all over the place now. They're taking over the world, as it were. We're also getting deep learning chips. This is a chip that was uh, uh, Intel bought out Mavidius last year. It's a 79 dollar chip, you can stick it in your, in your uh, USB plot, uh, port. It's a tiny chip, you can see it here. It's got loads and loads of transistors on it, and it's used, for instance, in the DJI's Spark drones, it will, which, which, which is capable of face recognition. It will recognize you and respond to your gestures. The chip that does this costs $10. And what does that mean? Well, it means that these deep learning systems can replace humans in many tasks at a fraction of the cost. And I think it's clear that drivers are going to be out of job, shop workers, agricultural workers uh, for picking fruit, industrial workers, airport security staff, university lecturers, translators, journalists, medical specialists, they, they're all under threat, I think, from this. As an example, this is a recent report from Google that they have a deep learning system that will outperform 
the best pathologists in the world at cancer detection, even given them unlimited time, and their chip will, will get the answer out in, you know, 100 milliseconds or something. So th there's one limit here. Deep learning will only do things that humans already know how to do. So you might think it's basically using supervised learning with training data. So it's not really intelligent. It's, it's clever, but it's not intelligent. But uh, I think we've been working on what I would call true intelligence. We have a, an artificial system that can refine repeating patterns with no instructions at all. It's called JAST for Jake, who's sitting over there, <laughs> and me, Simon, and Tim, the guys in the lab who came up with this thing. And you'll find anything that repeats, essentially. You don't need any supervision. And it runs, uh, we, two years ago, we had it running on a $100 FPGA, Field Group Programmable Gate Array. So right now, we're trying to come up with chips that will have uh, millions of neurons, billions of synapses, processing trillions of operations a second, and we'll probably be able to do that for $10 as well. And uh, this technology was recently licensed by Brainchip, a, a California-based company, for making hardware. Now, for me, this is all you know, great, except that if we keep the current system, it could be catastroph catastrophic because people's uh, jobs are going to disappear. But there is a solution. There are several solutions, actually, uh, possibly. And for me, uh, one solution is to give everybody an un unconditional basic income. And that's where I bring in my other uh, pet topic. Because uh, in my blog, I've been thinking about you know, ways of just giving people money. Robots won't buy anything. So uh, you know, the economy needs people going and buying things. But if they don't have any jobs, they will, nobody, the economy will, will collapse, essentially. But here are three possible ways of giving people a basic income. One is negative income tax, idea proposed by Milton Friedman, almost in, uh, implemented by Richard Nixon, of all people. Um, I've calculated that taking the, the percentile uh, of distribution of income, incomes in France, if you had a flat rate tax at 30%, you could give 600 uh, euros a month to everybody. And that will be paid for by the 39% of the people who earn more than 2,100 euros a month. It's a completely self-contained system, just redistributes wealth. Second possibility, central bank money injection. I don't know whether you're aware of this, the European Central Bank has been creating 80 billion dollars, uh, euros a month. That's 2 trillion euros over three years. And they've just given it to the financial markets. Just put it in people's pockets and you would stimulate the economy. Uh, and the last thing is uh, my favorite thing. I'd actually done a TEDx talk on this, a universal financial transaction tax. It turns out I, I did the calculation this week, weekend, with um, uh, the Bank for International Settlements, who published his data for 24 countries. And the total for transactions last year was over 11 quadrillion dollars. Tax that at 0.1 percent, and you could give a, 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 an unconditional basic income at 50% of the median income for everybody on the planet. And then all the people in poor countries would have some money to live on and so on. I think these are, these are ideas that are worth considering. So the take home messages. We're going to have, we've already got 10, $10 chips using deep, deep learning, which are replacing lots of skilled jobs. Future self-learning chips that I'm involved in developing could even replace jobs requiring intelligence. And if we continue with the current system, this is, we're heading for a disaster. But there are solutions already available. I've mentioned three ways of doing a basic income. And if you, if you do something like this, I think the future is very rosy for my grandson. We're going to have a place where, basically, we'll be able to free to do things we want to do, uh, uh, free from the, the need to go out and earn money, because basically the robots will be doing everything. And I just want to say that I can, I can now hand over to another speaker this morning who's thought about the same thing. We were just talking just before the session. We disagree about whether the basic income is the solution, but the, we do agree about the fact that we have to think about this now. The technology is so cheap and so powerful that jobs are going to go. And uh, if we don't want you know, the pitchforks coming out in 10 years' time, we need to, do the, we need to solve this problem now. Thank you very much.